Hey everybody, I'm Chris Provost, and today on Provost Park Pass, we're going to go through all the mysteries and all the allure of Adventureland. So here I am at the very top of Main Street, and this is the hub, or right where Walt Disney and Mickey Mouse's statue is. Now this was designed specifically with a line of sight into every single land. I can look this way, look right into Tomorrowland, I can look straight ahead and see right through the castle into Fantasyland, or I can look through the fort and see directly into Frontierland. I can do that with every land but Adventureland. They purposely designed that way so that you couldn't see into Adventureland, creating a sense of allure and mystery. The only way to find out what's in Adventureland is to actually go into Adventureland. So Adventureland was one of the five original lands on opening day of Disneyland. It's actually my personal favorite land, and I'm super glad to be here today to talk all about the trivia of Adventureland. Now, something you might not notice, Adventureland is the only land when you walk into it actually gets a little bit smaller, where every other land you walk into gets bigger. It's designed that way on purpose to create this excitement of being here in Adventureland. Also, one of the things that's very unique about Adventureland is if you look around, there are no vendors selling popcorn or churros. Walt was worried that if people were here selling popcorn and churros, that the smells would actually take away from the illusion of being in a jungle. So this is the one that the only land in all of Disneyland where you can't buy a churro and you can't find popcorn. Adventureland actually has four attractions to it. You have Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. You have the Jungle Cruise. You have the Tarzan Treehouse and also the Tiki Room. The only one that offers a fast pass is uh, the Indiana Jones ride. When Walt bought the land to make Disneyland, he bought it from the Dominguez family. And the Dominguez family actually owned this land and they had a beloved palm tree that their grandparents brought over in 1896. Their uh, grandparents brought this tree over there. The uh, Dominguez family had some children who were actually even married under that tree. And when they were selling their land, they actually asked Walt if he would take care of that palm tree. Walt being the man that he was and the high integrity they had, he says, absolutely. And he did, he's taken care of that palm tree. He had it actually moved because where, uh, where it was originally planted, they were landscaping it, but he actually carefully had it moved by the Imagineers and they moved it here to Adventureland. And you can actually see it today, right here by the Fast Pass of Indiana Jones and Temple Forbidden Eye. There is the Dominguez palm tree. It's over 118 years old. It's one of the oldest living things in all of Disneyland. It's not the oldest thing in Disneyland, that's in Frontierland. That is the Dominguez palm tree that was originally on this land when Walt Disney bought the land to create Disney Park. One of the best attractions in Adventureland is the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Forbidden Eye. The ride was created and opened in 1995. It's very popular, so you want to get a fast pass if you can. There are so many hidden things in this ride that's going to blow your mind. Let's go explore. As you walk through the line of Indiana Jones, you'll notice you're going down a slight incline going down and keep getting down lower and lower and lower. And this part here I'm walking through is called the Bamboo Forest. When you get to the very bottom of the Bamboo Forest, it's going to kind of flatten out a little bit. That's exactly where the train is passing over. So we're going down deep enough so we can go under the train. The more you know. Now we're starting to go back up the hill because we've actually gone underneath the train. Hi, here we are in Indiana Jones, the Temple of Forbidden Eye. Now when you're coming down the line here, you'll actually see a little office. This office has all kinds of unique artifacts. One of the most valuable artifacts it has here is actually the Life magazine that has the very first appearance of Mickey Mouse on the cover. It's the first time Mickey ever appeared on the cover. Here it is. It's a very, very valuable magazine. A lot of people want it. And Life Magazine actually would like to have this copy back because they don't have a copy themselves. So there you go. If you look closely, you could actually find some crates that have some interesting names. Take a look at this crate right here. Deliver to Club Obi-Wan, right there. At this crate right here, it says to Oxford University, M. Brody, 
is Marcus Brody from the Indiana Jones Last Crusade and also Raiders of the Lost Ark. Abner Ravenwood. It's Marion's father. You'll notice when you're writing the ride, there are these little, uh, they call them myroglyphics. After the Myra guy that's here in the temple. They're hard to decipher unless you have one of these nice little handy dandy cards, these Indiana Jones cards. They're given out in 1995. If you didn't get one, don't worry, you can just print it off on the internet or ask one of the Disney workers and sometimes they'll have extras and they'll give them so you can actually decipher the myroglyphics. Whew. Such a fun ride. I'm actually walking through the exit way right now of Indiana Jones and the Temple Forbidden Eye. And the thing about it is, if we walk from the very beginning to the very end following this path, it's about a quarter of a mile, making it the longest line in all of Disneyland. Don't worry though, they've made it so fun, and there's so many things to look at, that it doesn't feel like you're even really walking very far at all. At the exit of the Indiana Jones ride, you can actually see a minecart. This minecart was actually one of the real minecarts used in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. So check it out. Right at the entrance of the Indiana Jones ride, you'll see this beautiful truck right here. This is the actual truck that was used in Raiders of the Lost Ark. There are only six of these trucks left in the world. This one is actually owned by George Lucas and he's lent it to Disney to have on display here. Now, one of the cool things about it is this right here. This is one of the few things that was not actually on the original truck. They added this, this golf ball is on top of it. This is for the stunt driver so he can see where he's driving the truck when they're filming that chase, the famous chase scenes. So this is one of the few things that's not actually authentic on the truck, but everything else is actually authentic. There you go. The Indiana Jones ride is my wife's favorite ride. She actually rode it one time 17 times in one day. She's a nutcase, I know, she's a complete nutcase, but she loves it. So I don't know, if you guys can break that record, I'd be impressed. That's all she did all day long was ride Indiana Jones. It's a lot of fun. Be sure to get a fast pass because the line does get kind of long. So right here at the very entrance to the Indiana Jones ride, there's a little tiny hidden secret house right here. In 1955, Little Golden Books came out with a book called The Little Man of Disneyland. It's about this leprechaun who lived in Disneyland. And of course, Imagineers felt that they really should have a house for this little man of Disneyland. So they built him an actual house right here in Adventureland at the base of this tree. And as you can see, the attention to detail is crazy. It looks exactly like it does in the book as it does here on the tree. Whew, only Disneyland has that attention to detail. That's why I love them so much. So right behind me is the Tarzan Treehouse. It's a really fun place for little ones to go have an adventure. Let's go have a look. This treehouse is actually 70 feet tall. Made entirely from concrete. It goes down 42 feet down into the ground to anchor it. It was built in 1962 as the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. They redid it again in 1999 and released it as a Tarzan Treehouse to coincide with the release of the Tarzan movie. As you go through, you can actually see parts of these little books lying around. They tell you the story of Tarzan. Oh. So many steps. Lots and lots of steps. But it's worth it. At the very bottom of the treehouse, you can actually see a little photograph. Phonograph. And it's actually playing the Swiss Family Robinson polka very softly as a little homage to the original treehouse. This is also a really fun place where kids can come and play and do all kinds of things. They can climb on ropes, they can actually do musical instruments. There's all kinds of fun adventures for them to have here at the bottom of the Tarzan Treehouse. Here I am at the entrance to the iconic Jungle Cruise. Jungle Cruise was one of the original rides that was operating on opening day. It was actually Walt's favorite ride. When the concept of the ride Jungle Cruise was first pitched, Walt actually wanted real animals to be on the Jungle Cruise. He thought it'd be exciting, more like a safari. The problem was they realized that animals would probably sleep during the day and also be terrified of the Jungle Cruise motors. So Walt actually told the Imagineers, build me some animals, and they did. And that's how we got the Jungle Cruise. The Jungle Cruise skippers, when the ride first opened, only told facts about the animals. They didn't start adding their jokes until the early 60s when they got a list of approved puns they could start using. And from there, it's been all downhill, right? Huh? That's two thirds of a pun, PU maybe? Adventureland is the narrowest of all the lands in Disneyland. 
Uh, it was designed that way to give you a feeling of adventure and mystique. Something kind of cool if you think about it. Here I am in front of Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. It's actually called Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room because Walt used his own money to actually fund this project. So the actual name is Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, not just the Tiki Room. Now the Tiki Room was built in 1963 and it was originally designed to be a restaurant. But as the focus groups came in and actually ate there and watched the audio anim animatronics, they were so enthralled with it that they didn't touch their food. So at the last minute, they scrapped the idea of the restaurant and just made it an entertainment show. Originally, it cost 75 cents to get into the Tiki Room. It was one of the few attractions that cost a, a little bit extra to come into. 75 cents would get you into the Tiki Room. This was the first exhibit ever to use audio animatronics. Because of the success here, we have rides like Pirates of the Caribbean, we had uh, Indiana Jones, pretty much basically every ride that's ever come after it has used them as well. Now when it first came out, they were worried that people wouldn't understand what audio animatronics were, so they actually had Jose the bird perched outside to attract people to see what it was. It was so popular and so many people would gather around Jose the parrot that they actually had to scrap that because it caused a huge bottleneck at the beginning of Adventureland, so they got rid of that after a little while. The Tiki Room is actually the longest running show in Disneyland. It's been running since 1963 and shows no signs of slowing down. The show actually features over 225 audio animatronics. That includes 8 macaws, 12 toucans, 12 tiki drummers, and more than 50 orchids. Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room is the only attraction in the whole Disneyland park that has its own themed bathrooms. Pretty cool actually. One last little thing of trivia about the Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. If you want to be the person to tap on Jose to start the show, just ask a cast member and they might let you do it. You know something, if you want to start up the, wake up the bird, it's okay. But don't be crazy about it, okay? Don't go, hey, Jose, no, 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 no. Don't do that because the birds go freaking out, you know, it's not good, okay? Just make it really calm and cool and, and just like, then they know you know what you're doing, okay? It's not some kind of crazy, insane person coming in there, okay? <laughs> That's Maynard, ask for him, he'll let you wake up, Jose. Maybe! Maybe! <laughs> Well, everybody, that is my little tour of Adventureland. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something new here about Adventureland. It's my favorite land at Disneyland. The next video I do, I think I'm going to be doing Fantasyland, all the trivia and magic about Fantasyland. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And every week, a new video will be coming out with some new trivia. Also, if you want to see my wife and my beautiful son, they vlog every day. You can follow that right here, and you can watch our little shenanigans on a daily basis. And every week, I'll be posting a new video in Provost Park Pass.